Welcome to The Buzz. I'm Cassie Steffen. And I'm Drew Schwenderman. Today we have a very special guest joining us, Olivia O'Brien, singer of the hit song, I Hate You, I Love You. So if you missed any of the hottest Hollywood happenings this week, don't worry, we've got you covered. First on today's show, we have Woke Up Like This, where we'll be talking everything new and exciting in the entertainment world. Coming in at number three on our countdown, Adele is married. That's right. The singer confirmed at a concert in Australia that she had exchanged vows with her longtime lover, Simon Konecki. She sparked rumors at the Grammy Awards when she thanked her manager, her husband, and her son on stage. Later, though, she said he was just a partner. The two first met in 2011 and share a four-year-old son, Angelo. We can't wait to learn more about their love in her next album, Whenever It Comes Out. But coming in at number two, there's one relationship that some people aren't a fan of. Beauty and the Beast hits theaters in two weeks, but some people plan to boycott the film over an exclusively gay scene. Last week, director Bill Condon said Gaston's sidekick, LeFou, played by Josh Gad, will explore his sexuality in a, quote, small but significant subplot. Owners of a drive-in theater in Alabama said they would not show the film because it is not family-oriented. And a lawmaker in Russia has proposed banning the film because of homosexual propaganda. The director has called the backlash overblown and says, quote, it's just part of what we had fun with. Now, Drew, I just find this so ridiculous. And I think my favorite tweet I saw was, can you imagine being okay with a woman, a teenage girl falling in love with a buffalo, but you draw the line at a gay scene? It is absolutely ridiculous. And you know, Beauty and the Beast is a movie that everyone knows, everyone grew up with. And the director is just adding um, a subplot to kind of make it more inclusive, but it doesn't affect the general story. So I really hope people um, kind of overlook that if they don't agree with it and tune out to kind of see this what's supposed to be an amazing movie. But our number one story of the day is the iHeartRadio Music Awards. They were held last night at the Forum in Inglewood and honored the network's most popular artists. Ryan Seacrest hosted the show, which recognized artists like Adele for Female Artist of the Year and Justin Bieber for Male Artist of the Year. The Chainsmokers won big with four awards, including Best New Artist, Best Pop Artist, Best Dance Artist, and Best Dance Song for Closer, featuring Halsey. But ultimately, Justin Timberlake won the top spot for Song of the Year for his summer tune, Can't Stop the Feeling. He then gave a moving speech on inclusion and acceptance and told the audience, being different means you're making a difference. You know, I was really happy that Justin Timberlake took that opportunity in his speech to say something positive and to really encourage fans because he has such diverse, such great fans. And so I was really happy that he was using that platform as such a likable, fun guy. Agreed. And I think his speech was a wonderful way to wrap up what has been a hectic but fun award season. Absolutely. Well, stars also can't stop buzzing about the new horror film by Jordan Peele, Get Out. Our correspondents, JT and Kendall, have the story. In America today in 2017, in 2017. if I gave you the opportunity to stay white or to become a black person, would you change to becoming a black person? He wasn't driving. I didn't ask who was driving. I asked to see his ID. So how long has this been going on, this, this thing? <laughs> what have you heard about this movie so far? Well, it's a horror movie. It's controversial. It's about a couple, and they're going home to see her parents, and it's a white family. Oh, the girl from Girls, Allison Williams, is in it. So I love her, so I'm excited to see her. Hey guys, I just took a break from the Get Out movie. It is crazy. It is freaking intense. I'm scared. Okay guys, so we just saw the movie and my heart is beating like crazy. I am shook and JT screamed a lot too. There's definitely this element of like white people have the brains, but black people definitely have the strong physique, physique and genetic makeup in order to, and yeah. then if you can combine those two, you can make something great. One thing about this movie that I was a little bit worried about in the very end, it got a little gory. Mm -hmm. And I was worried as a white person that white people are going to take this really personally and get really angry at the gore and like he's killing all these. Yeah. Oh my 
Okay. Which Jesus everyone was like, people. everyone was cheering in the theater. They were like, yeah, kill I, mean, that I was white cheering. <laughs> we were all rooting for him to kill the white people, but obviously we don't want. That's not how we feel. We don't want him killing them because they're white. It's just like a lot of white people take for granted being white because mm -hmm. it's, uh, as you said, comfortable. It's you comfortable. know, it's, it's, it's hella comfortable, comfortable for certain situations. And then I you see that. films like this, yeah. and you see the uncomfort of most black people in America, which white people don't, you know, they don't register because they're yeah. white and so they're not living with it day after day. Um, one of the things I wanted to kind of talk about in particular that this film addresses is interrelation, interracial relationships yes. because that is something that you see right off the bat. And I heard that you found one of the characters attractive too and I was like, all right, Kendall, like, you know. So, I mean, would that has this made you kind of, I hope it didn't make you afraid of interracial relationships. No, I feel, feel like, like, Personally, it kind of, you know, like in the beginning, I said I want to be more aware, and I am more aware. I'm like, I'm definitely not more afraid. I'm so glad that we got to do this, and <laughs> Me too. it was such a positive experience. And I'm not gonna lie, I was a little nervous. It's like, how is this gonna go? Like, are we gonna like, you know, be like super like standoffish? Or are we not gonna be able to talk about it? But we totally were able to do it. And yeah, I'm just really proud of. I was like nervous about like peeing my pants. <laughs> Well, thanks, guys. I can't wait to see it because I'm obsessed with horror movies. Up next, let's hear from Katsy about one of her least favorite words in this week's edition of Girl Talk. I'm what many may call basic. I love pumpkin spice lattes, Ugg boots, brunch, mimosas, yoga, and I am all about wearing leggings as pants. Mmm, tasty. But I am not okay with being called basic. For those of you who may not be aware of the term, it essentially describes women who enjoy things that are popular among other women. Because for some reason, that's not okay. Check this out. In 2014, College Humor released a video in which a doctor diagnoses a woman as being basic. You're a basic b****. Doctor, there has to be a mistake. Well, unfortunately, no. Your uh, symptoms are completely in line with other basic b****. You're into scented candles, you order your bagel scooped, and then you own a picture frame that says family on it. It's my fault, she's a basic I gave you that friend's box set for Christmas. Mm -hmm. I do have a sense of humor. I know that this video is meant as a joke, but it clearly portrays liking things like scented candles or the TV show Friends as somehow negative. Now, to be fair, College Humor released another video about a year later, describing a basic bro in the same situation. But it got nearly half the views as the original. Why? Because basic bro just isn't a thing. Men don't face the same social stigma for liking things that women do. I know that many people use this term in a light-hearted, joking way, but there is a lot of subtle misogyny at its core. It implies that when a large group of women enjoy something, it somehow decreases its social value. So I offer this advice. If you don't like peppermint mochas, don't drink them. And if you don't like Pinterest, don't use it. But let's stop villainizing women for simply enjoying the things that they like. Because I really don't need your approval to order my favorite drink at Starbucks. I have a gold card. Let's hear from our reporter, Charlotte, who is live at Bandito's, hearing from USC students. I'm Charlotte Pruitt, and I'm here outside of Bandito's, USC's newest bar. Ever since it opened in November, it's been giving the 9 a run for its money. But the 9 is very established and has always been USC's favorite bar. So our reporter, Brogan Craner, took to the streets to find out which location students prefer. Take a look. Uh, Bandito's, because... It's cheaper, and Nino is always really crowded. I'm kind of a Banditos guy now, just because the Nino gets like a little too crowded, and they're pretty strict right now. Um, and Banditos is like waving me in, which is pretty chill. Um, yeah, and they have some pretty good tacos, pretty dank tacos. And the bartenders are like pretty dope, so Banditos is the way to go. I prefer uh, the the Banditos because it's lit. Uh, Nino for sure. You know, it's better vibe, better atmosphere. Honestly, more chicks, so I mean, that's where I like to spend most of my time. That's what people on campus are saying, and if you have an opinion, comment it below. Katsy and Drew, back to you. 
Thanks, Charlotte. Well, here in studio, we have singer-songwriter Olivia O'Brien. Thank you so much for joining us today. Yeah, I'm happy to be here. Um, you guys might recognize her from her song, I Hate You, I Love You, but she also has released a couple singles, including Empty. Um, so can you tell us a little bit about that song that you just released? Yeah, um, I released it like um, two weeks ago, and it's my, probably my most emotional song. It's really personal to me, and it was my first time ever doing a music video, so I'm really excited about that. Okay, it was your first music video, so let's take a quick look at it so you guys can see how it turned out. Yeah. I wish there was no tomorrow. But I'm empty inside, yeah, I'm empty inside, and I don't want to live, but I'm too scared to die. Yeah, I'm empty inside, I just don't feel alive, and I don't want to live, but I'm too scared to die. Now, I love this music video because it's so fun and so sad at the same time. So what was the inspiration for all of these visuals in it? Um, it's supposed to kind of represent um, like party culture, I guess, how um, they, you know, they look like they're having the time of their lives and it's so fun, but really on the inside, they're not really too happy. Yeah, totally get it. So uh, do you have an album coming out soon? Are you working on new songs? Yes, I actually just finished my first album, and so I'm going, you know, just doing little tweaks and stuff to production, vocals, all that, and hopefully I'll be releasing it in a couple months, so I'm really excited about it. Cool. Um, and were there some other inspirations in your album besides this party culture? Yeah, there's. It, I think it definitely touches on a lot of topics, but it's mainly um, kind of a lot of girl power songs, like about boys, like I don't need you, that kind of thing, but I'm really excited about it. Now, obviously, the song I Hate You, I Love You with Nash is really what put you on the map. So I understand he found you through SoundCloud. Can you tell us about that? Yeah, I actually used to do um, covers on SoundCloud. with I would just record it on my phone and play it on my keyboard in my room. And I didn't think anything would ever come of it. But I did a cover of one of Nash's songs. And he heard it, and he wanted to work with me. So I sent him I Hate You, I Love You. And he put a verse on it, invited me to LA to record. And the rest is history, I guess. <laughs> Well, it's awesome, and we're so excited that uh, you're out here on the scene. So we're going to play a quick game. Before that, we want to show a little clip of I Hate You, I Love You, so you guys can see what we have next. I hate you, I love you, I hate that I love you, don't want to, but I can't put nobody else above you. I hate you, I love you, I hate that I want you, you want her, you need her. And I'll never be hurt. So we're huge fans of I Hate You, I Love You, which is why we're going to play a little game based off it called I Hate It, I Love It. <laughs> we have three trending topics, and we want to know whether you hate them or love them. Let's look at the first one. So the first one is Katy Perry's new hairstyle. It's mm. short, it's blonde. What are you guys thinking? I am not a big fan because I honestly think that she copied Miley Cyrus from three years ago, so... I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I think she was totally rocking the bob before. Um, I'm not sure I like this yet. Maybe uh, I'll like it a little bit more over time. But I'm, I'm kind of missing that bob and even some of her colored hair. Yeah, I think I'm leaning towards hate it. I also thought it was Miley when I first saw that picture. Mm. She had the bright red lip. I mean, Katie's so beautiful that she can pull off any hairstyle, but I miss the old hair. Yeah. You do. So it seems like we kind of hate it across the board right now, for right, yeah, now. right now. But the second one is Lord's new song. Now, it's been two years since Lord released a new single, and this one's called Greenlight. Do you love it? Do you hate it? What do you think? When I first heard it, I honestly didn't like it. I wasn't a big fan, but then you listen to it a couple times, and you kind of understand it. And I also think the video... Um, really helped me like understand what it was about. And I think Lord is really kind of finding herself as an artist. So I, I really love it, honestly. Ooh, the first time I heard it, I kind of skipped through it. I wasn't too crazy about it. But then I read the lyrics on Genius and I think it's amazing. And I've probably listened to it like 20 times an hour. So love it. <laughs> I love it. And I loved it right off the bat. I went on a road trip this weekend and we must have played it at least 20 times in a row. I think it's great that Lord is really maturing in her music. And I'm really excited to see what else is going to come on her album. Yeah, I was with you too. I didn't like it at first. I had to really come around to it, but since then, I love it. It's a great song. And on to the third one, Juicy Sweatsuits. They're making a <laughs> comeback, guys. What are you thinking? Ooh. Do you hate it? Do you love it? I love Juicy Sweatsuits. I'm like one of the people who like started bringing it back. Like me and my friends like all bought the sweatsuits and like wore them out. Like I wear that to the club. Like I <laughs> love awesome. them. I love them. I'm a huge fan. Is there a reason you brought them back though? I thought Adidas tracksuits were kind of popular. 
I mean, I love Adidas tracksuits too. I just like I'm really into like matching sets, but I'm I've been really into the early 2000s, like mm. not like the like skirt over leggings trend, but like there's other Hate things. <laughs> like I am over skinny jeans. I like like baggier like pants and like that's kind of like a late 90s early 2000s thing and I'm just kind of kind of on that wave and the yeah, cool. juicy tracksuits are early 2000s. Fun style. So, throw out the skinny jeans, buy some juicy sweats. Yes. I think that's what we have here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Well, that is all we have for today. So we want to thank our lovely guest, Olivia O'Brien, for joining us. Thank you. And we're off next week for spring break, but we'll be back in two weeks to catch you up on all things entertainment. Thanks for watching.